Hey everybody, Judah Hoover coming to you here from the Landlords and Investors Mastermind Group. It is a cold day, uh, but a nice and sunny day out walking properties. A good friend of mine uh, asked me to walk a property uh, in a portfolio that he's thinking about buying. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the skill of walking any property in 10 to 15 minutes and coming up with a number. Uh, but before we walk this property, if you could give me a like and give me a subscribe just so other people can find out about this video, I hope you're getting value from them. Uh, that is my main goal goal here is to develop and deliver uh, value to you, uh, the dear listener. But we're going to walk this property and come up with a price uh, really quick and help my friend out with whether he should or shouldn't buy it. All right, so uh, I think this is like a... Uh, D quality property uh, in a D quality neighborhood, uh, gonna cash flow really nice, but there's not gonna be a ton of uh, appreciation, gonna have a really strong high cap rate, uh, but the tenants you're gonna experience on a property like this uh, are gonna cause you more than average headache. Um, if you screen properly, they won't be awful tenants. They're not going to be the worst tenants ever, but just understand you're not gonna have a, a straightforward, super smooth, property management experience. So uh, we've got hardwood floor that's been painted here at one point. Um, I would either clean that up and paint that again or uh, maybe do some cheap carpeting in here, uh, knowing that if the carpet gets ruined, I can always just rip it out and go back to this hardwood floor. We've got vents in the floor, which tell me that we probably have either some type of a gravity heat system or a uh, forced hot air system. We'll go downstairs and see what that looks like. Uh, coming into the kitchen, we can tell this has been a little bit of a work in progress just by the trash bags and stuff that we see around. This flooring is starting to separate, and starting to come apart, uh, just indicative of the age of it or the poor quality of insulation or water. In any case, you're going to want to replace that um, I would leave these kitchen cabinets. I think these kitchen cabinets are fine. Uh, I would probably replace this countertop just because it's a little bit old um, and just funky. It looks like somebody tried to do something. You know, some, somebody at one point got a, had the good idea came, fairy came to visit them. And the good idea fairy said, hey, let's treat this C or D quality property like it's a B or an A quality property. Um, and they put this tile countertop in i think it does not come off well and even in a c or a d quality property like this i would probably replace that i think you're looking at eight feet by eight feet there uh, two runs of eight feet for that countertop and that is very easy to price out uh stove you know five six hundred eight hundred bucks plug a number in there same for a refrigerator and you go from there. Cool thing about this is the dishwasher is there and that's really neat. So, you know, you can walk this property, start writing down numbers, writing down prices. We come down here into the basement. Let's see what we find in the basement. Okay, so first thing we see when we come into the basement is that it's really only a half basement. The other side of the basement over there is a crawl space. And I would get a flashlight and I would peek in there. But this basement walls, I do not see any leaning or bowing or shifting. I look up here at all of this. I forgot to turn my light on so you guys can't see as well as I can, unfortunately. Uh, but I'm looking at all these floor joists and they all look perfectly fine perfectly good. I don't see anything cracked. This is a really high ceiling. This is like, I mean, I can barely reach up and try and touch that ceiling. This is like, you know, 10 foot, 12 foot ceilings down here, something like that. Uh, but it's hardwood floor. It's, you know, not something that you would ever finish. We've got a relatively new gas hot water heater here, as well as a gas forced hot air system. Interesting that they have this vent here because that would mean that they're trying to make this conditioned space. I think that that is, well, I don't know, that might, they, they might do that because of all the pipes down here, trying to keep it warm enough down here to keep the pipes from freezing. Uh, but usually there's enough residual heat. See that pipe there? 
you know, there's enough residual heat from the floor upstairs to keep those pipes from freezing, but they are spending money to actually heat this down here. And I do not have my flashlight on, so I can't show you what that looks like in there. Let's go take a look at the rest of the house. You know, we've been inside this house for what, four minutes at this point, and already we've just got some general numbers written down for that we can then, you know, take off our comps and apply whatever formula we want to, but it does not take rocket science to walk a property, come up with a number. There's nothing in here that is really too terribly awful. So it's, we've got original plaster walls and I'm seeing some holes and stuff like that. And here you can see what this looks like. So uh, this is plaster and they put this on like as mud and it seeps back in and just kind of like hangs then and dries on this lath is what this is called. Uh, so there's a bottom coat, brown coat, and then a top coat, white coat. Um, and then it's painted. So whenever you have something like this, you know, the problem is, is that the undercoat has broken off on those things that like hang down and slag. There's a specific name for them that I forgot what it is right now. Anyway, so what you would want to do is you would want to cut a bigger piece here out of this and then just put a piece of drywall in there. And you would need to do that every place that there's something, I think they say usually bigger than a fist is what they do that for. Otherwise you can just, you know, put mud over that and do like a, a patch job there. Um, so instead of like, you know, whatever number you wanna use, $3,000 for paint, $4,000 for paint to, to paint a whole house, you might need to add another, I don't know, $500, $600 to that, just for that. Uh, here we see purple drywall in the bathroom. That's the correct application of that. Sometimes you see purple, sometimes you see green, uh, but you but seeing that just means that it is special for uh, wet applications. We're starting to put in a nice big surround uh, standing shower. No tub, but an oversized shower. That's really nice. Um, if I was rehabbing this house just because of the neighborhood that it's in, I would probably do the floor here, but I would leave that vanity alone and wouldn't do anything different with that uh, medicine cabinet. Maybe do some new fixtures. But anyway, it's a, you know, we're in a C or a D quality neighborhood. So we're gonna be looking to maximize cash flow. We're not gonna be looking at a whole lot of appreciation here. This is bedroom number two with a closet and then bedroom number three over here. So really, you know, even though you know, this house looks like it's in rough shape. It looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. The average investor who walks in here would say, geez, this house in this neighborhood, this is just, you know, there's so much stuff to do. Not, not really. I mean, when you paint this, and I mean, the walls are just filthy and there's holes in the wall because it's plaster. So you're gonna just need to understand that, that going forward, you're on your turns, you're probably going to need to spend a little bit more money than what you do on other properties. When, and by a turn, I mean when one tenant moves out, the next tenant moves in. You know, you're going to have more that you need to replace there, more that you need to spend on that type of thing because of the drywall plaster situation. But you're going to get great cash flow on a property like this. And, and even though it looks like it's kind of, you know, bitched up, nicked up, junked up. A lot of this stuff, a fresh coat of paint, is really gonna take care of and it is gonna make this place look absolutely great. I think this is a, a good property if it can be got for the right price. All right, everybody, so uh, just in summary there, I think that this is a great property uh, if you don't overthink it and if you don't try to, uh, you know, rehab it more than what you should. I think that it's something that will uh, perform nicely for you. I didn't see anything in this property that I thought was big or bad or scary. I'm getting good at locking doors and talking on the camera at the same time. I don't know if you noticed that or not. 
but uh, you know you just want to be careful that you're not lying to yourself this is definitely you know a C or a D quality property in a C or a D quality neighborhood you're not going to see tons of appreciation you are going to see tons of cash flow uh, you're going to have a little bit higher than average uh, headache factor when it comes to the tenants um, but you know I think that it's I think it's a good property and it's one that I would move forward with don't get scared by neighborhoods don't get scared if you buy properties at the same at the right price and you're not going to be trying to sell them anytime uh, really super quick uh, understand it might take you a little bit more time to get out of them but properties like this uh, can be a nice addition to your portfolio and perform very well please give me a like uh, give me a subscribe and share this video with other people know what you're getting into know what you're getting your hands on and even with d quality properties you can make money thanks have a good day